Medical rescue teams recovered the body of a famous Spokane climber who died in an avalanche last week. Jess Ross Kelly was climbing in the Canadian Rockies with two fellow climbers April 16th when they were all caught in that avalanche. Hi everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. And I'm Tom Sherry. Today, Parks Canada officials confirmed the three bodies they recovered were those climbers. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley learned how crews found the climbers on Sunday. Well, immediately after the avalanche, Parks Canada crews made multiple attempts to search for the climbers, starting with aerial searches. But each time, weather and avalanche conditions prevented ground searches and recovery efforts. It finally cleared up Sunday, allowing the visitor safety team to search the area. This avalanche dog and handler were the ones to locate the bodies of the three climbers. Parks Canada officials say Spokane native Jess Ross Kelly and Australian climbers David Lama and Hans Jorgauer attempted climbing the east face of House Peak in Banff National Park. They started the morning of Tuesday, April 16th and summited at noon. Ross Kelly's family shared this photo, which they believe captures the joyful moment after the three reached that summit. They began their descent the same day. Visitor safety manager Brian Webster says the avalanche conditions the day of their climb was listed as spring conditions, meaning the hazard could change throughout the day depending on the elevation and time of day. What is important to know here is that the avalanche conditions changed significantly after the day of the accident. Incident Commander Shelley Humphrey says none of the climbers wore an avalanche transceiver and added challenge to locating them in the debris. We understand in the climbing community um, that this happens. In this particular case, the outcome would not have changed, but it would have expedited uh, the search and, and the recovery. Visitor safety specialists placed an avalanche transceiver in the area of the debris so they could continue their search when conditions improved. A specially trained avalanche dog and her handler eventually located and recovered Ross Kelly and the two other climbers. Ross Kelly's wife Allison shared a statement which read in part, We are deeply saddened by the loss of our loved one and his teammates, but we are grateful to have received closure. Parks Canada says this winter it had six avalanche fatalities and four separate incidents. That's including the recent accident where the three climbers were killed. They say it's not typical for them to have three climbers die in one single avalanche accident. In the newsroom, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Well, they live in Washington now, but two natives of Sri Lanka are reflecting on yesterday's devastating suicide bombings. The two spoke with our Seattle sister station about the bombings that killed 300 people and injured hundreds more. Sumath and Anne both grew up in Sri Lanka. The country is only about a third the size of Washington state. The population, though, exceeds 21 million people. Yesterday, the two learned the country was the target of several attacks. One thing you see in Sri Lankans, they always smile. I'm very sad in, in, in underneath right now. You might see me uh, have a glimmer of a smile on my face uh, because we think smile and move forward. Well, the bombs detonated at three churches and three luxury hotels. Anne said her husband was visiting Sri Lanka at the time. He is safe and now back on his way to Washington. Well, two Eastern Washington state lawmakers have come under national scrutiny in just the last few days. State Representative Matt Shea of Spokane Valley receiving criticism for conversations he reportedly had advocating spying against activists in the Spokane area. State Senator Maureen Walsh of Walla Walla also under fire for comments that she made during a debate about nurses working hours. Whitney Ward is in the newsroom tracking the strong responses. Good afternoon. So let's start with Matt Shea. Today, more lawmakers are speaking out about these allegations against him after it was first reported over the weekend. So he's accused of offering to conduct surveillance on Spokane residents for political purposes. Today, Washington Governor Jay Inslee released a statement regarding the report, saying Representative Matt Shea's history of hate has now crossed a new line. He participated in conversations that advocated for violence against those with dissenting opinions. He is actively conspiring with others to surveil and target political activists.
U.S. Senator Patty Murray tweeted, These views and discussions are deeply harmful and run completely counter to the values we aspire to. Now on Saturday, Washington Lieutenant Governor Cyrus Habib called on state Republicans to remove Shea from their caucus. Now today, Washington Democrats are joining that call and they are taking it even further by encouraging state Republicans to sanction Shea. Now, Krem has reached out to Shea and state Republicans for comment, but we have not yet received any word back. Now, the other Washington lawmaker also getting criticism is Senator Maureen Walsh. She has represented it. She has represented Walla Walla now for the last five years. And the reason everyone is talking about her now online is because of these comments that she made in Olympia. I would submit to you those nurses probably do get breaks. They probably play cards for a considerable amount of the day. So the Senate, the state Senate was debating a bill that would make several changes to nurses work requirements. Walsh was concerned that rural hospitals wouldn't be able to keep up with the new regulations. So she proposed an amendment to limit nurses workdays to eight hours rather than the 12 hour shifts that most prefer working now. An online petition was started to encourage the senator to shadow a nurse during a 12 hour shift to see firsthand how they spend their day. That petition already has more than 600 thousand signatures. We also reached out to her office for comment, did not hear back, but within the last hour, we have learned that Senator Walsh has agreed to shadow a nurse to get a firsthand look at their day. Also, our Taylor Vido also getting a closer look with a nurse in Pullman today. So make sure and tune into his story, which is coming up tonight on Crime 2 News at 6. For now, I'll send it back to you, Jane, Tom. Whitney, thank you very much. Taking a turn to outside, uh, Tom tracking some nice mild spring weather. Perfect Easter weekend. Yeah. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous weather, especially on Easter Sunday and the work week getting off to a nice start. We're seeing some rain now moving into areas of northeastern Washington, northern Idaho. This is very typical spring weather for us. Uh, lots of rain over uh, along the Cascades and in areas of western Washington. Right now we're at 64 degrees. The wind, that's going to be our primary weather feature to talk about uh, overnight and again tomorrow. Wind out of the south southwest at six, uh, 17 miles an hour. We could see a few showers here locally overnight. Tomorrow looks like it's mostly cloudy. There may be a few showers around the area, but Spokane should stay dry. Windy gusts to 20 to 25 miles an hour, but very, very mild. Temperatures about 10 degrees above average as we shoot for a high Tuesday of 68 degrees. For the weekend, it cools down to seasonal. 59 on Saturday, 57 Sunday, all under partly cloudy skies. I'll check the rest of your seven-day outlook coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Tom. Meantime, we're tracking more fallout from the mass layoff notices at Spokane Public Schools. Mark Mark Hanrahan telling us about a unique student protest. We're working to show you for Creme 2 News at 5. Yes, good afternoon, guys. We often hear about high schoolers protesting. In fact, several Rogers High School students took to the streets just last week, but rarely do we hear about a protest at a middle school. Well, this afternoon, students at Gary Middle School in North Spokane walked out of class to protest the district's layoffs. Gary is one of the schools impacted most by the layoffs. They're slated to lose six teachers. The district meantime says the layoffs are simply based on seniority and they're not targeting any one school over another. However, for these students, many of them say layoffs would remove their favorite teachers from the classroom. So we'll hear more from those kids coming up new at five tonight. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mark. Well, today is Earth Day and to celebrate visitors have been able to enter Washington State Parks for free instead of paying $10 for a day oh. pass. An annual Discover Pass, that's $30, so this offers a steal. This is the fifth of 12 free days offered in 2019. So if you'd like to see a full list of all the days you can get into state parks for free, you can head to creme.com and find it there. And next year will be the 50th anniversary wow. of Earth Day. Yeah, the story of how Earth Day came to be isn't well known to a lot of people. The first celebration of Earth Day actually took place on April 22nd back in 1970. It was a response to an oil spill in California in 1969. After Earth Day was announced, more than 20 million people around the U.S. gathered together to hold rallies, demonstrations, and participate in activities to promote a clean and safe environment. It eventually led to creation of the EPA, mm -hmm. the Clean Air, Clean Water, and Endangered Species Acts. Yeah, and some Krem employees went out to do a river cleanup today, I so we're that. proud of them for that. Mm -hmm. Well, we have several ways tonight that you can get involved and contribute to making our area just a little bit greener. Creme 2 Shana Wall Tower shows us how trees are at the center of those efforts. 
With climate change, species extinction, pollution, there's a lot that needs to be done to make sure we're living on a sustainable planet years from now. And today is one day of the year to do it. In the spring, I always like to remind people to, to start watering kind of deep and infrequently, especially during when we get to our hot summer months. Kitty Kosenki with Spokane's Urban Forestry Department says it starts with just taking care of what's in our backyard. We see a lot of drought stre stressed trees and those trees can be more susceptible to insect and disease problems because they are stressed. So you can keep them healthy by being sure that they you know, have adequate water and they're not drought stressed. It's the simple things like watering your trees and plants that make a difference. The environment, plants and trees around us are supposed to help us. Trees reduce pollution. They filter the air we breathe by um, putting out oxygen and absorbing and storing carbon dioxide and other harmful pollutants. They also help us to mitigate our stormwater runoff. That's such an important thing about trees. And the better we treat them, the better they'll treat us. And that's what today is about, recognizing the role we play in keeping our planet healthy. So what's step one? Well, there are several ways you can get involved. There's recycling, making sure you're not littering, plant a tree, it's the perfect season for it. And even today, if you can, ride your bike to work. It may seem small, but if we all take intentional steps, we'll start seeing progress. The biggest goal, carrying those actions outside of just today. Make it a habit of incorporating these steps into your daily routine, and it can be fun. Just a couple of days ago, some of the Krim team were out collecting trash along the Spokane River. Our reporter Tim Pham shared the work they did. After the city shared this photo of trash along the bank, they decided to get out and clean up what they could. It's quick projects like these that are fun, but still beneficial.